welcome to the programme. The Dunlop National Rally Championship rolled into Bantry, County Cork, on Friday evening as the seaside town played host to the final round of the series, the West Lodge Hotel Fastnet Rally. It was Bantry's first time as venue for the popular event, and as expected, there was a bumper entry for the rally, including Melvin Evans, Dennis Cronin, Tara O'Reardon, and Eugene Donnelly, back in his Corolla WRC. The bustling harbour town boasts some of the most impressive vistas in West Cork and is the gateway to the picturesque Berra Peninsula. Sadly, with the Irish winter beginning to take hold, the stunning scenery was obscured by a blanket of dense fog on Saturday morning as the crews made ready for the eighth stage event. The tenth and final round of the Dunlop National Valley Championship kicked off last night at the ceremonial start in Bantry. However, the guys have had quick service here before they tackle eight stages which make up the remaining round in this championship. It may have been won already by the Meath man Tim McNulty, but here this weekend the talk is about Eugene Donnelly being reunited with that Corolla. Last year's rally saw Eugene take a class win in the Vauxhall Nova, but this year he was back in his title-winning Corolla. I'm delighted to be here, number one. Number two, I'm delighted to be back in this car again. I'm really looking forward to the day. But, you know, I'm here just to have a bit of fun um, and to see if we can drive again. There's no doubting Melvin Evans' form in West Cork. The Welshman won here last year and is the outgoing national champion. Well, it's anybody's rally, you know, it's a, you know, tough stages and the weather, and it'll be good. No, I'd, say, I'd say it'll be a great rally, I'd say great to watch and great to compete in, and even down the field as well, there's some great cars in all the classes, so I'd say it'll be a good rally. Of particular interest was the battle for the Rally Donaghy two-wheel drive award, which was between Frank Kelly in the Class 13 Escort and Wesley Patterson, who had already wrapped up the Class 14 title. I believe it's now we're joint with Frank Kelly, uh, leading on the points going into this, this last round, so just have to stay in front of Frank and sort of seems to be like winner takes all. I'm not aiming much at Wesley, to be honest, uh, we'll just do our own thing and go as hard as we can. Let's try and stay on the road. I still, I don't want to lose the class here and I think if we finish the top three in the class we can get the class. So we're going to have to punch clever, but we'll go as hard as we can and see what happens. The weather could scarcely have been much worse with torrential rain and heavy fog covering the mountainous terrain around Bantry Bay. First to tackle the opening loop of two stages, the last year's winners Melvin Evans and Patrick Walsh it proved a tough task for the Welsh crew, who struggled with a misted windscreen on top of the foggy conditions they finished the loop in fourth place. Bearing better despite a break from rallying since June was local man Dennis Cronin, who held third overall after the opening loop. Into easy right plus, far D. Easy left. Into fast right plus 16. Absolute left and keep right over crisp. And don't cut here to the left. Far D. It was another Corkman who emerged ahead of the rest on stage two. Dara O'Reardon and Derry co-driver Tony McDay held a 13-second lead at the first service halt despite this slight overshoot. Making it a Cork 1-2-3 for the opening loop was Brian O'Mahony who held second overall on only his second event in the Subaru. Right 30, Chris John Keat middle 100, slow 5 right long, 30, flat 4 left, tighten the flat 4, 120 braking, 3 right, and Chris tightens the 6 right, 3 right, and Chris tightens the 6 right, into Chris, and 1 right, tightens the 2, into Chris long, keep middle line, and flat 2 left. There were mixed fortunes from multiple tarmac champion Eugene Donnelly. He punctured the wheel on stage one but climbed up to fifth overall with the fastest time on stage two. Another to puncture on the opener was Welshman James Belton, who hasn't had much luck on his two attempts at the Fastnet Rally. So problems with the puncture as well for you, James. We know Eugene Donnelly suffered with one too. Yeah, we the first stage about halfway through. 
it's first time in a right-hand drive car, so I just clipped the front left on the passenger side and punctured and drove for about a mile or two with it flat and decided we're going to have to stop and change it. So we lost. <laughs> who knows? But who cares? <laughs> we're having a laugh. There was better luck for Stephen Simpson, who held ninth overall, although the Mancunian wasn't happy with the suspension settings in his Subaru. There's definitely going to be a WRC battle in the field today, but amongst the, the Welsh and UK visitors, is there a bit of rivalry amongst them as well? Oh, yeah, there's a bit of crack with all of us, so there's a bit of a betting going on last night as well, so I'll say nothing and we'll wait till the end. Is there a bit of an internal prize maybe for the winner amongst you all? Just a bit of money we've got on it, that's all. <laughs> it was hard to know who to back in the Rally.ie two-wheel drive duel. Although Wesley Patterson had his nose in front after the opening loop. Just 10 seconds in arrears was Frank Kelly, who had less power in his Mark II. But these conditions can prove to be a great equaliser. The first of two Darians in the rally was that of James Stafford, who held eighth overall. The second was Washington James' example, who was off the pace and down in 20th place. But setting the pace in the two-wheel drive section was called Barry Mead, who had a flawless drive to hold sixth overall at the break. This is absolutely no grip out there whatsoever, but it was just a case of uh, short shifting the gears and getting up the straights and breaking early getting through tight pins. But uh, no mistakes, no spins, no overshoots. So that's the way to do it today, I, I would be thinking. Sam Smith was in a battle for the Class 13 title. The Carlo man trailed Frank Kelly by just four seconds after stage two. In class 11, there was local pride at stake, with Damien McCarthy holding the lead ahead of Cal McCarthy. No relation. Cal took third in the junior championship at the last round of Donegal and was scaling a steep learning curve on his home turf. In class nine, it was a familiar sight with Lloyd Hutchinson leading whilst holding 14th overall in his mini. Eighth overall after the opening loop, Fergus O'Mara struggled on stage two and dropped to 13th. David Condo hoped to play it safe today in his bid to secure third in the Class 14 Championship. One right 40, flat to the next junction, flat left 80, long one right into flat left 120 and turn open hairpin left, open hairpin left here. That's it, give her the wipers, lad. Holding the upper hand so far was younger brother George Condell. The former junior competitor was third in class 13. Into four right over big crest at house. And two right in over bump. 80. Turn square left, no escape. Go now 120. Right. Mr. Kondo, you're fighting for championship points today as well. I surely am. I'm holding on, I think, by the skin of my teeth. So uh, if I get third in class in the in the championship classer today, I'll be very, very happy. You certainly earned them today. Uh, I can tell you, but in fairness to the man in front of me, George, the brother, I have to hand it home. He is pedaling a choir well. He'd be delighted to hear as well that your brother's singing your praises behind you there. Ah, sure. Once in a while, you might say. It's, hard, it's a hard man to beat, but sure. I learn from the best as well, you know. I, so I sat with him long enough. It's still very close, but it's tricky. It's very tricky out there. The last, I know there was a lot of fog in it and just wet, and you know, it's, it's very tricky. But you know, we're back here you now. Hopefully, it'll clear up a bit, and we've another, you know, the rally's only started, so we'll have to keep going. I was fastest on the last one, which is I never expect the fastest time here today at all. Um, I'm just I'm, I'm over the moon with that day. I'm not even disappointed about the puncture. Um, I'm delighted I'm, I can show them back on the pace again, you know. Well, Brian, are you surprising yourself with times today so far? 
Yeah, I, I actually thought uh, we had gone a bit harder over the first one and we dropped time, and then I thought I'd gone slower in the second one and we, we were joined fastest, or well, second fastest. But um, no, we're happy enough with where we are and it's just case of keeping it tidy and push on from here. It may have felt longer for the competitors, but that's how the leaderboard looked after just two stages. So we've reached the halfway point at the Fastnet Stages Rally. The buzz continues in Bantry, but the conditions worsen on the stages. Will it be Dara O'Reardon's day? See you in part two. in West Cork for part two of the West Lodge Hotel Fastnet Rally. There was no improvement in conditions as the crews tackled the next loop of stages. In fact, they worsened. As did Melvin Evans look, the Welshman forced to retire on the third stage with mechanical trouble. Uh, we just started the stage and everything seemed fine, you know, we were having a bit of a go. And then went over one of those jumps and we just lost drive. So it uh, broke the output flange on the gearbox. So we just locked the diff then to drive out for this. Uh, unfortunately, our rally's over, but that's life. Live to fight another day. Dennis Cronin was happier with his suspension settings for the second loop. The local man climbed to second place after stage five. And Chris, six feet should have put on left over Chris. There it is, 115. A right over Chris jump. And Davey over Chris. Slight left over Chris, and slight right opens. 200 over Chris. Another to tweak the suspension settings on his Subaru was fellow Corkonian Dara O'Weirden. The Middleton man increased his lead to 46 seconds after the second loop. Brian O'Mahony had an off-road moment on stage three and eventually retired on stage five. Not before setting fastest time on stage four. Opens up a bridge on Shiny. Oh, all right, right, right. Seven left here, opens up a bridge on Shiny and six right, keep right. And the seven left opens the two over Big Chris jump, keep in. 40, caution, seven left over bad one, 30, turn square right. Eugene Donnelly showed his class on the second loop and set two fastest times to climb up to third place. Steve Simpson was unhappy with the setting on his Subaru. The Manchester native slipped to 11th place after stage five. The lead changed hands in the race for the Rally.ie two-wheel drive award. A poor tyre choice saw Wesley Patterson slip seven seconds behind Frank Kelly, who climbed up to seventh overall. It was now trailing Sam Smith in the Class 13 battle. Fourth overall and leading Class 14 was Cork crew Barry Mead and Lee Moynihan, who were 17 seconds ahead of Wexford's James Stafford and Amy Ryan in the Darien. There are magic times that you're punching in today. James, you've got to be happy with where you're lying at the minute. In that top ten? Yeah, no, we're very happy at the moment there because the, the stages are very slippy and we're finding it hard to get grip, so we're very happy where we are at the moment. Uh, just glad to be there. Damien McCarthy still held the Class 11 lead and had climbed up to ninth overall on his home event. Conditions worsening throughout the day. I think a lot of competitors have noted that. Yeah, but they're suiting us a little bit. The wet and the muck is kind of suiting the front-wheel drive, so we're happy enough. 14 seconds in arrears was Cal McCarthy, also in a Honda Civic. Do you have any experience in the fog? Uh, very little. Uh, this is actually our second day in the rain even, so we're just taking our hand out. Learning a lot today then? Oh, a hell of a lot. The, the jaws are dropping, coming to corners, but we're getting there. This last stage out of service, the rain was treacherous in it. The wipers would hardly clean it off the screen, like, you know, so... Yeah, I might have to dry up a bit now since, so... Uh, might be a bit easier. It was all to play for on the final loop of the final round of the Dunlop series. And turning to the class results, it was a fourth place finish in the junior section for local man Colin Roach. Well, keep it out of him. And does it shake in? Don't stop till you see the 3 2 1 ball, right? Keep it out of him. There's a 3. Yeah, back it off now. Right entry, OK? Right entry. It is open, it is open. Back in, here up and right, sorry. Six out of it, and one left.
Jeff Young, 100. Third in the junior class went to fellow Cork crew Darren Loftus and David Beamish in the Civic. More rebels in the Civic were the junior runners up Jonathan Delaney and Jonathan Carroll. But it was a win for the kingdom in the junior class as Mark Horgan took the top spot with Tipperary's Tommy Hayes navigating. In the historic section, Philip McKibben and Tommy Command took second in their Ford Cortina. Local crew David Kremen and Johnny O'Shea brought their Mark 1 Escort to the top of the historic class. Tipperary's James Dunphy had fun sliding his Honda Civic around the stages and took the class to win for his efforts. secured the Class 3 national title with a win on his home rally. In Class 4, Vincent O'Shea's debut drive in the Mitsubishi netted third place for the Kerryman. Dubliner Pat Price took the runner-up spot in his Subaru. Also in a Subaru were Class 4 winners Brian O'Keefe and Donica O'Callaghan. New chicane. Middle on the jump. 100. Five right minus over jump. Five right minus over jump. Two long five right opens. Sticking with another four wheel drive class, local man Mike Crennan finished third in class 15. The right entry chicane, right to left to right. Turning here, pin left, turning here, pin left. Easy. Welshman Gwen Thomas took the runner up spot in his Ford Puma. But it was a home win in class 15 for Ian Chadwick and Stephen Quinn in the Subaru. The early retirement of Shane Timoney cleared the way for Eamon McCafferty to take his second Class 5 title in a row after a year-long catfight between the two Pumas. Skipperines Pat Callan and Trevor McCarthy won Class 6 in the Peugeot 106. Fellow local crew Adam Platt and Alan O'Flynn won Class 7 in the Ford Focus. Martin Norton survived a few scrapes on his home rally to take the runner-up spot in Class 9. Five right here. Two left, 60. Open hairpin right, continues 150. Two right, stay middle, 100. It was another Class 9 win and another Class 9 national title for Wicklow's Lloyd Hutchinson and Kevin Flanagan who finished 11th overall in the Mini. Former club president Jerry O'Mahony was trying out his new sequential gearbox, which was a gift from his son Jason in Australia. He finished second in Class 10. Cavan's Patrick Kiernan and Dara O'Brien took the top spot in Class 10. Luke McCarthy had been third in Class 11 before he had to retire with mechanical trouble. 60, stay left, over a big jump, 170, mid over a big jump, flat right, mid over a big jump, you know, flat right, easy, easy, one left, in over crest and long one right. Stephen and Kenneth O'Shea were glad to finish after damaging their class 11 starlet on their home stages. One, one. One continues into a five right 80, five right 80, 200. One, one, keep it up, keep it up. 
200 and you're into a three right. 11th in class was enough to secure the class 11 title for Martin McLaughlin in the escorts. Local crew Paul Fitzgerald and Colin Moynihan finished third in class 11. Second in class were fellow locals Cal McCarthy and Eamon Dulé, who won the Dunlop Drive of the Day Award. But it was a fantastic result for Damien McCarthy and Eamon Hayes, who won class 11 and finished eighth overall on their home rally. Not so lucky was Ray O'Sullivan, who retired with a broken throttle cable shortly after this close call on the opening loop. Long one left on cut. 120, long two right narrows. Oh, you pipe. Oh my, it's Slippy, 170 over Chris. Class 12 champions Arthur and Matt Kearns rounded off a fantastic year with another class win in Cork. Steve Simpson took the class 8 win and Pence overall and pocketed his winnings from the wager between the UK crews. George Condell finished 9th overall and 2nd in class 13. Sadly, James Stafford retired his Darien on the final loop. Kerry's Fergus O'Mara and Brian Doherty took third in class 14 and seventh overall. Sixth overall and second in class 14 turned out to be enough to secure the Rally.ie two-wheel drive award for Wesley Patterson and Martin McGarrity, despite finishing two seconds behind class 13 national champions Frank Kelly and Liam Brennan in fifth. Fourth overall and quickest two-wheel drive crew of the day were Corkman Barry Meads and Lee Moynihan. Former Fastnet winners Dennis Cronin and Coleman Hurley had to settle for third place on their home rally this year. Back to his brilliant best was Eugene Donnelly, who almost stole the show in his Corolla WRC. He and co-driver Alan Keane finished in second place, just six seconds behind winners Dara O'Reardon and Tony McDade in their Subaru S12. Dara, I know you're doubling up with birthday celebrations. I know you're delighted with this win. Yeah, absolutely delighted. It was a really tough day's rally. And uh, the last loop there, uh, Eugene was taking time out of us. So it was really close in the end, six seconds or something. So it was, I was really nervous though all day, but it came good in the end. So as the champagne flowed for Dara and Tony, another man ready to celebrate was top two-wheel driver Barry Meads. Barry, what a drive today. You nearly made this look effortless. I don't know that I make it look effortless, but uh, I'm happy with the re end result, definitely. Uh, uh, it was a long day, fierce long day. I'm very tired. Up at six this morning. I'm usually coming here at six in the morning on a Sunday, not Sunday morning, but uh, happy with the result. Frank Kelly just missed out on the Rally Dottie Award, but the Tyrone man was still delighted with the Class 13 title. Uh, tyres worked well, everything worked well. We threw everything at the last stage to try and get ahead of Wesley, which we managed, but championship was just too far gone to do that. But a fantastic season. Didn't think it would be at this point in the season. I'll definitely come back next year for more. Brilliant championship. It was a brilliant championship for Lisburn's Wesley Patterson, who came away with the Rally.ie two-wheel drive award. Uh, it's been a, been a long year. We've had a good run in the national. I sort of thought it was all slipping away there in stage, stage seven. The club started slipping, but... And held out to the finish and get the championship at the end it was a good bonus. So there's the results of the Fastnet Rally and a look at the overall leaderboard confirms the final scores in the Dunlop National Rally Championship. Well, it's hard to believe it, but that wraps up another season in the 2011 Dunlop National Rally Championship Series and what a year it was. It was a fantastic display of competitiveness, organisation and dedication from competitors and organisers alike. We have winner Tim McNulty today's day. It was Dara O'Reardon. But we're looking forward to seeing who is going to step up to the plate in 2012. But for now, from myself and the rest of the crew here at the West Lodge Hotel in Bantry. See you soon. Thank you.